Hallelujah. Would you stand with me as we bless the offering that was sowed today? You know, the word actually there in cheerful in the Greek is the word hilarious. It means to give hilariously. And if you really define that word, it means to spin about in a violent emotion. That you're so excited about giving to God. That's the way, you know, most people would think, well, hey, they're pretty crazy to do that. But I'm telling you, that's what Scripture says to give. I'm looking forward, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the day that we don't have to wait and take an offering, that people come to the house of God. They're running to the house of God. They run into the altar. There's not a time for offering. There's a time for just run to the altar and say, God, i got to get this out of my hand. I've got to lay it in on you, God, and say, here's my tithe. Here's my offering. God, it's all about you. That's what I'm believing for. I'm listening. I mean, it, see, when we get that, that, that knowledge, I know so a lot of us make our checks out the first, the first check every month. That's, that's God's. But at the same time, that's awesome. But when people start running through the parking lot, <coughs> waving a little envelope or whatever, saying, God, here, I'm, you know, running to the house of God, and you come to, already at church, and you come in, and all of a sudden you look around, there's money laying everywhere. <coughs> that's blessings from God in favor. So stretch your hands. Let's believe God this morning for an incredible offering. Father, we thank you for a time of giving. Lord, it's, you said to give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, you said to, the, a cheerful giver as we give of the abundance of our heart. As we give, Lord, we ask you to bless it. I want you to sanctify it. Lord, we believe in for uh, new homes, new houses, new cars, new jobs, promotions, and checks in the mail, and all the things that we made the decree of Job 22, 28. But, Lord, we also believe that you're the ruler, you're the protector of everything about and what we have. Everything we own is yours. If you're not God of all, you're not Lord at all. So, Father, we give you everything, and we give you praise and glory. Bless it now. Bless the giver. Father, we thank you for the promotions in, ex in advance and, pro and jobs in advance. And Father, the phone calls will be made. The contracts will be shifted and changed. Whatever it takes, God, to put your kingdom people on top. Lord, we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. Amen. But there's, uh, listen, uh, Paula is going to, I know she's watching, she's streaming this morning. So this is what I like for us to do. She's going to have her hip surgery on Thursday, I believe. And so most of you know she's one of our intercessors. And I'd like for you to do just, just turn around and stick, stretch, stretch your hands towards the camera. Father, we bless Paula right now. We thank you, Father, that the doctors are all got it, everything in order, Lord. There's, we cast out every spirit of fear in her life. Lord, we thank you that she is healed in Jesus' mighty name by your stripes, Lord. But, Lord, you do use doctors and you do use wisdom in doctors and medicines. So, Father, we thank you that everything is going to work together for good the way it's supposed to, called according to your purpose, because she's called according to your purpose purpose. So, Father, we thank you that functions and favor and, and the insurances and the monies and whatever it takes, oh God, to begin to flow. Ever, this will be a quick healing process. And, Lord, we thank you in advance in Jesus' name. And, Father, for all those others out there that's got an issue with their problems, if they're in a hospital room or, Father, they're at home and laying on the couch or, or just looking, Father, we thank you that you're healing. You're omnipresent. That means you can be at LifeGate and you can be at their house or wherever they are at the same time. So, Father, Father, you are the master physician. Lord, we believe in doctors. We believe in medicines. But, Lord, your word says that you are the great physician. So, Father, we send that life, that spirit of God, through that camera right to where they are. And we speak healing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. God's good. God is good, good, good. So, if, I know about you, but I've got this thing trying to... Uh, Get, get me, you know, and I said, you, you, you're trespassing, man, you can't, you can't, you know, body, you got to line up with the Word of God, and so uh, years ago, I got this quick revelation before we introduce our gift, I got this quick revelation, and, and the scripture says that we have the mind of Christ, is that right? <clears throat> we have the mind of Christ, if we, if we have the mind of Christ, then we have the right to speak healing over ourselves, because we have Christos, the anointed one, in us, okay, and so we, we just say, chest, you got to clear up. You know, body, you have to function. Muscle, you've got to function. And you focus all your thoughts in the mind of Christ on that organ or on that body. And that you say, Lord, you, 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 I am healed. I'm not that I, I were healed. I am healed because Peter said we were healed. Isaiah said you shall be healed. So it's past tense. And so we say, Lord, I've got it. I receive it. And that settles it. That's a, that's a 21st century believer right there. 
those three things. I believe it. I receive it. That settles it. So we re- receive that this morning in Jesus' name. Dr. Sandy, come up and uh, introduce Greg for us this morning. Isn't it a beautiful day today? Yeah. We've had great weather, yeah. um, lots of rain, yeah. and I'm hoping that's over so we can finish our building. We need, we need our building finished, so we don't, we don't want any more rain, but, you know, sometimes heaven doesn't listen. <laughs> Even though God says he always hears. Anyway, he always has a better way, but uh, I just want to introduce to you our um, guest ministers. It was probably close to 30, maybe close to 30 years ago that I actually briefly met this awesome couple of God all the way in Australia. I went with Bishop Hammond uh, and a ministry team over there, and we ministered at this prophetic conference, and it was like Jane Hammond, myself, and Marilyn King, we were the prophetic ministry team to over a thousand people and we ministered to a thousand people in two days and that's the last time I've ever decided to do it that way (laughs) but we were so exhausted it was like we'd go and prophesy and come back and go to bed but it was a very fruitful time but I uh, and just recently I was um, over in Australia with these wonderful apostles, and they have the most, they are apostles over a local church. That what, what town is it in? I wanted to say Brisbane. Okay, uh, they have uh, their daughter and son-in-law pastor a church in Brisbane, and it is amazing. Um, it, it's a very young church. They're doing awesome things, and I have to tell you, I was very impressed. At all the times that they have been uh, prophets and then apostles, They've never pastored a church. They've always just been apostolic, really, over the whole area. But now, uh, I know we were all going, you need to pastor a church. How can you do what you do and not pastor a church? They were going, no, we're not called to pastor a church. And I really do believe that now when I've seen the fruit of them waiting on God. You know, you get mindsets as to what you think you're supposed to do just because you're an apostle that you have to learn all this stuff by pastoring, and it's not true. So they didn't let other people pressure them. They didn't let religious mindsets pressure them. They waited on God. They knew there was supposed to be a church connected to them. But later on, it was their own daughter and son-in-law. And I was very, very impressed. And I am the adopted grandmother of one of their grandchildren, Zara, over there, little Miss Beauty Queen. So I've got a grandbaby all the way over on the other side of the world now. But I would like for both of them to come up. Some of you weren't here Friday night, so I want Julie to come up as well, and then we'll hear from, yes, yes, we thank you for being here. Awesome. Well, it's great to be here with you. We had a great time with Dr. Sandy um, in Australia, and our little Zara loved her. She, as soon as we go, she said, you have a good time with Dr. Sandy. And and she's saying, can I call her up? Can we call her up? She just loved her. So, but she did a great uh, job when she was in Australia. Uh, The people loved her. It was a good, strong anointing. And people really loved the teaching on dreams and vision. And they just enjoyed having her. So you're blessed. And we're blessed to be here. I know Greg's got a word specially for you. It's just for you. Uh, the Lord woke him up 4 o'clock the first day we were here, 4 a.m. Um, God doesn't care that you've traveled 20-something hours. And <laughs> you might, but he woke him up and gave him a download especially for you. So it's an honor to be here with you. We love your pastors. We thank you so much for having yeah. us here. We've enjoyed being with them. And so get ready to receive because this is a word just for you. Amen. 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 I got this thing. Oh. Awesome. All right. Well, it is. It's a, it's a great day to be alive. Amen. Amen. Great day to be in church. And uh, we do really thank uh, Apostles uh, uh, Mickey and Sandy Freed. And uh, we know that uh, God's knitted our hearts together. And even though we've known each other for such a long time, it's just, again, it's the timing in God. He has the right time and the right place. And uh, everything just comes into place uh, when God's, uh, in, you know, get everything in order. So, uh, so this morning... Um, as Julie said, it's like uh, the first morning that we that we woke up here. I mean, it was like you know, God just downloaded all the stuff uh, to me, and 
And so I always want to make sure it's a, a fresh word, a word in season. And uh, this, uh, this word has never been preached before, not by me at least anyway. And, uh, and we know that it's, just, it's a, a word uh, especially for you guys. And so uh, I just pray that God will give me the wisdom and revelation to bring it forward in the way it's supposed to be brought forward. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you today, Lord, for this word that you have in season for LifeGate Church. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you uh, that you ha have uh, LifeGate Church in your hands, oh God. And Lord, that you are leading and guiding uh, this church and these people, Father, into what you have uh, for them and into the position that you've got them to have. And so, God, today we thank you for your anointing upon this word. Lord, bring it forward. Lord, anoint me as I bring it forward. Anoint my lips as as I share uh, what you've given to me, the revelation, the understanding, Father. And Lord, we know that there's so much more that you have and so much more even in this word, oh God, that you have for us to unpack and, and, to, and to bring uh, the revelation of this word into our lives, oh God. We know it's for a church, but Lord, we are the church. Yeah. And so, God, today we take a hold of this word. This is my word this morning, Father, for, for my life, oh God. So we ask that you would bless it. And we thank you, Lord, for your anointing. Break off every mindset that's contrary to yours right now. And, Lord, we thank you that we are open to receive from you this morning in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Well, just before we go into the Word, I had a few uh, words of knowledge that the Lord's been releasing to me. And uh, I felt like the first thing that God wants to, to pray about is, is, is uh, we'll pray into is marriages. So if you, uh, if you are married here this morning, I just want you to stand up. Doesn't matter whether your spouse is here or not. Uh, also, uh, heard the Lord talk about broken marriages and even divorced people, because sometimes there's a stigma that goes, uh, you know, with the divorced people, and uh, and it's like, you know, that was the end of it when you got divorced. That sorry, uh, you broke covenant. That's it. No, God has no more uh, to say about you or, or, or purpose in, in your life. And I felt like God wants to break some of those things off even this morning because God says you still have purpose. You still have destiny. And uh, whether it was your fault or not, you know, come on, God is... God's, God's grace is bigger than, than us. Uh, and, and, uh, and what we think sometimes is not what God says, all right, or what He thinks. So we're going to pray about those three areas, you know, marriages, broken marriages, and even divorce. So God, today, we thank you, Lord, as these ones are standing. And Lord, some of us even know of others who even need this word. They need this anointing. See, it's when the anointing is here that we draw upon it. So God, today, I thank you that you, you've opened up this area right now for marriage marriage and, and broken marriages and even divorced uh, people right now. Father, I pray into their lives. I pray into the marriages right now that you would strengthen us, uh, strengthen the marriages right now, that we would be uh, ones that you can count on. And Lord, that we'd raise up uh, others uh, uh, in strength and, and the marriages. And Lord, people would look to, the, to our marriage and say, I want a marriage like yours. Lord, I thank you. I want children like yours. I, I want a good family like yours. So God, today, and we speak into the those broken marriages, Father. Lord, that, that, Lord, nothing is broken so much that you cannot put it back together. And so, Lord, we speak into those marriages right now to come back into line, to come back into order, to come back into alignment, Lord. Lord, even where it's been dislocated, Father, bring it back in so that it's aligned right and it's strengthened now in Jesus' name. And today, Father, we break off even the stigma over those divorced ones now. And Father, we say that you still have purpose and you still have destiny for those ones. And we speak to them and we say, come back into alignment. Come back into that destiny now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. All right, you can be seated. And then the Lord gave me, you know, like the 400 in that cave, debt, distressed and discontented. <laughs> now, if you're, if you're in any of those three areas, you're in debt, you're discontented, and you're uh, uh, distressed, I want you to stand right now. Because the Lord spoke to me, it sh probably should be all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless you are totally chilled out, your bank account is amazing. <laughs> but because, because again, uh, the Lord's given us, see, the Lord's brought us to a place where we are now debt-free for Julie and I. It, has, it wasn't like that. It hadn't been like that for most of our life. But now God's brought us to a place where we're not just debt-free, but we have money in the bank. 
And I tell you what, you know, when, when Jesus says, you know, when he sets us free, we are free indeed. It's not just free of stress and free of all. It's free of being, you know, under that burden of owing money and finances and all that sort of stuff. When you are really free, come on, when you are debt free. You are free indeed. <laughs> Amen. Well, you don't owe anybody anything, but you come to that place now that you can be the, bar, the, the lender. You can lend. And I tell you what, there is a difference when you come to the place of ownership and you come into that place where you don't owe, owe anybody anything. I tell you what, there is, a, there is a freeness in that. And so, Lord, I'm praying today for those ones, Lord, that where we are in debt, Father, Lord, you are calling us to be a people to be debt-free, oh God. Lord, I thank you for that debt-free anointing right now. And Lord, we pull upon it. We grab a hold of it. We thank you, God, today. Lord, if we've got to sow uh, and we reap, oh God. Lord, there's a sowing and reaping anointing where you give and it will be given back to you, multiplied, shaken down, come on, running over. Oh God, today, even as uh, about Pastor Mickey was saying, wouldn't it be amazing? We come in and, 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 the, and there's, there's a debt-free anointing where there's this money coming in and it's like, you, you have to get out of my way. I want to give. <laughs> and it's like, we come to the place where like, it was like, uh, who was it? Moses said, that's enough. Is it Moses? You're giving too much. It's like, come on, you're going to have to hang on to what you wanted to give and you have to give it another time because there's so much in the house. Come on, that's what I'm talking about a breaking free, a debt-free anointing right now. And Lord, for those ones who are, who are distressed, come on, you are in distress. You are stressed out. Now listen, you know, the Lord gave me this. Um, the area between your load and your limit is your joy. Between your load. Now, your load is what you can handle and your limit is the tipping point or the breaking point. Between them is your joy. Some of us, our, our, our load and our limit yeah. is, so, <laughs> is so close, you can't get anything out there. So there's no joy. But see, God says, listen, there's no, there needs to be some joy in your life. Yeah. And sometimes it's not, oh, God, you know, miracle God, bring me the joy. God says, listen, your load and your limit are right up. It, there needs to be some space. Amen. Now, like I said, all, all stress is not bad. Some stress is good because it's, it, it pushes it forward and it, and it breaks us into new things and new understanding. But today, God wants to break off this distressing spirit right now. Father, today, I break this, this, this distressing spirit, Father. Lord, some of you, listen, sometimes, you know, it seems like the enemy's just hounded us with all these little things. And sometimes it is a distressing spirit. Yeah. But sometimes it is because we've taken on too much and, yeah. and, and it's up to us uh, to start to put some things into place. Yeah. So, Father, today, we thank you that your anointing is here now. Yeah. We break that distressing spirit. But, Father, we also say, God, give us divine wisdom in what to do and how to do it, to how to lead, how to lead a stressless life. Yes. In Jesus' name, we take a hold of that right now. Yes. And Father, the discontented, those who are not satisfied, those who are dissatisfied, and listen, this is not this is not a spiritual thing. This is not like, oh God, you know, I'm dissatisfied with, with where I am. I want to go further in you, all that sort of stuff. It's not that. That's good. That's a good thing to have. Because, you know, we're not just going to be satisfied with what we have and just get so comfortable we don't want to move on. I'm talking about this discontentedness where, 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 where something is just trying to eat away at us. We're not content with the things of God. We're not content with where we are. Listen, you are saved. That's a good place to be right now. Come on. That God has given you new life. He's given you understanding and revelation. But there's some of us, there's a discontent. There's an unhappiness that's there. The joy is gone. Father, I pray today that, Lord, that you would bring in the contentment, Father. That, Lord, that there is a joy in the house. That, Father, that we can walk in understanding and revelation that you are in control of everything, Father. We don't have to. Listen, God says, listen, take, can take care of what you have to do today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next year. Don't worry about next month. So, God, today... We thank you, Father. You, you're taking care of business right now. And that, Lord, that we can walk in such a joy, knowing that you are in control of every situation right now. And we walk in that today, now, in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right. Well, you guys can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, as I said, uh, on, on, if you're here on Friday night, I was going to teach you some Aussie words, some Aussie slang. And uh, this, is, this is hard from going to the anointing now. Now I'm trying to teach you some Aussie words. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, so uh, we say some different words in Australia. Different things mean different things over there than here. And uh, some things are, are, are uh, uh, X-rated. And uh, <laughs> some of the things that you say over here mean different things in Australia. Okay, so we're not going to go into those. <laughs> uh, but some of the things that we say, it's like we, we, like we shorten a lot of words. The sunglasses is sunnies. Okay, so if you're, you know, we're, I forgot my sunnies. It's like, okay, that's your sunglasses. Uh, brekkie is breakfast. All right, so we, we, university is uni. We, we, we bring everything down. You know, McDonald's is Maccas. It's like, so there's the, we do a lot of shortening. That's why we can, sp we can say a lot more words. In, 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 and especially Julie, she can say a lot more than even I can say in the short time that, that she has. Uh, uh, if you, if you, you want to do a, a U-turn, we say we chuck a U-E. We're going to chuck a U-E. Yeah. Like, chuck it, we're chucking a U-E, all right? So, so that's, that's doing a U-turn. Okay. Uh, if we're going to have chicken for lunch, we, we say we're going to have some chook. Okay. Chook, chook is chicken. <laughs> so it would be chucky chook, not chucky chicken. Chucky chook. Uh, a sausage is a snag, all right? A snag. We're going to have a snag on the barbie. <laughs> so, uh, so the afternoon we call Arvo. So, so Sunday afternoon would be Sunday Arvo. So Arvo, A-R-V-O, Sunday Arvo. Okay, so what are you doing? What, what are you doing this Arvo? It's like... Okay, you know that we're talking about the afternoon. All right. You don't, I'm not taking the quiz later to find out how many you're actually going to remember. But, <laughs> but uh, there's, there's one I really like, and that's, uh, that's when you're really busy at work and, and the boss calls you up and says, how are you going? You can tell him, I'm flat out like a lizard drinking. <laughs> so to be really busy... You say, oh, man, I am flat out like a lizard drinking. <laughs> so, so what happens, what happens is, is that in Australia, <laughs> we have all these animals that can kill you. We've we got so many things that can kill you. Snakes, spiders, alligators, crocodiles, dingoes. I mean, everything will kill you, right? And, uh, and then you've got this other little couple of islands off of, on the, the east coast of Australia called New Zealand. And you go to New Zealand... And nothing kills you. They got nothing poisonous. They got nothing except so many possums. All right. So, <laughs> so when they come to Australia, it's like, oh, we can't even do anything. Everything's going to kill you over here. <laughs> anyway, so I think God in His wisdom knew that 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 we could handle ourselves in Australia. We got to dodge and weave and bob and yo know, do all sorts of things, but but we survive. <laughs> uh, so what happens is that is that you get these. Uh, these uh, billabongs, these, uh, these water holes, and all the animals are coming down. So, so the lizard has to sort of slip in, and what it does when it drinks, it flattens itself out, okay? So, so it tries to be uh, inconspicuous to all the eagles and dingoes and <laughs> everything else that wants to eat you or take your life. Yeah. So, it, so it spreads itself out, so it's, it's inconspicuous and you can't see it as much. And so, so that's why when you're busy, I'm flat out like a lizard drinking. <laughs> and it's going to drink really fast, okay, flat out, and then take off. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Anyway, <clears throat> back to uh, the word. <laughs> that was a word of knowledge, Chad. That was a word. <laughs> You've been flat out like a lizard drinking. I know, both of you. <laughs> God can use anything, I tell you. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Well, this, this word, uh, I had, to, uh, again, like at 4.15. It was exactly 4.15 when I, when I woke up and the Lord just started to download me for about an hour and a half. 
download all this sort of stuff and, uh, and I had to put it all in and, uh, and uh, hoping that this is going to make some sort of a sense here. But um, the, the, the title is, Behold, I do a new thing for LifeGate Church. I do a new thing for LifeGate Church. And if we don't understand that God's doing a new thing, we'll all be stuck in the past. We'll be stuck with the old mindsets, the old weapons, the old structures, the old outdated patterns of yesteryear. What, what worked in one season isn't going to work in another season. So that's why you've got to get the new strategies. You've got to get the new anointings. You've got to get the understanding of what God is doing. This is a new season for, uh, for LifeGate Church. It's a new, God's doing some new things. And so those old outdated patterns and structures aren't going to cut it for today. That's why we've got, to, we've got to understand God is doing something fresh and new. But then you, go, you look at 80% of us really, or around 80%, don't, don't, we don't like change. We don't, we don't like change. We resist change. We like the, well, what's wrong with the old structures? What's wrong with the old mindsets? They, they work good. It's like, you know, if it's not broken, don't change it. <laughs> you know, things are still okay at the moment, but you understand that God is always moving on. He's always doing a new thing. And we can say, well, yes, he, he's, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. That's right. God never changes because he's always doing a new thing. Amen. Come on. Amen. God's always doing a new thing. He's got a new pattern. He's got a new, new understanding. He's got new revelation. He's got, he's got new strategies for us. And we can't, listen, when you look at the Old Testament, every strategy God gave to the army was a different strategy. The first time they said, they said okay, we don't have to worry about getting the strategies from God. We'll just do it the same way. And from, from the, the great destruction or great breakthrough that they had there in, uh, in um, um, Joshua when he broke down the... Jericho. Well, from Jericho, they had the, break, the great breakthrough. Then they went to Ai, a tiny little place, and they got smashed. They got beaten up because they just used the same pattern yeah. from that one to the next one. They didn't bother ch checking in with God. They just said, hey, look at how big we are. Look at how great we are. We've done it here. We've done it here. We're going to do it over here as well without checking in with God. God is doing a new thing today in Life Point, LifeGate Church, and we've got to understand. See, in Isaiah 43, verses 30, uh, 18 to 19, it says, don't remember the former things. So Alzheimer's is sometimes pretty good. <laughs> don't forget, don't remember. It's like, okay, I can't remember what I did yesterday. That's okay. <laughs> I forget people's names. That's okay. God will bring them back when I need them. All right? <laughs> So don't remember the former things, nor even consider the things of old. Wow. There's some things that God says, listen, forget about. Other things he says, always remember certain things. So, so we've got to decipher what are the old things we need to forget, what are the old things we need to remember. Because there's some things we still need to remember. And so God says here, verse 19, Behold. Behold, I will do a new thing, a new thing. That's a fresh new thing. This is a new thing. This is not something that's old, that's been reheated, rehashed, brought back, and it's like now it's somehow new. It's, it's gone through the microwave. Now it's like, woohoo, now it's new. No, 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 that's old. It's been heated up. That's old. It's been microwaved. You know when you get an old, <laughs> come on. You get this food and it's a microwave. It's just not the same as having brand new cooked food ready at that point. Rehashed up. Not, it's, not, it's not as good as the new. Come on. The fresh. This is something fresh. This is something new. It's not old. Now it shall spring forth. Now. Not, not before. Now it shall spring forth, and you, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And we'll come up with a few of those uh, uh, expanding on these uh, 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 scriptures uh, throughout the word. But in Isaiah 42 and verse 9, just one chapter back, it says, Behold, again, and I, I look at that word, behold, and we'll, we'll have a look at, at what it means shortly, but it's something, behold, the former things have come to pass. The former things have come to pass. The new things, I declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. 
before they spring forth, I'll tell you of them. So this phrase literally means before they begin to germinate, before God has the new things, before you even see anything germinating, before you even see anything uh, that, that's even remotely like what God has said. See, God is already working in the background. And it's just as Julie was, uh, spoke about Gideon. Gideon couldn't see anything, how things were working out. It was just like, I can't see this. You know, we're, we're, our, God, our fathers talked of the God of miracles and he did this, this and this. We're not seeing anything. But I tell you what, didn't he see it shortly? Yeah, yeah. Didn't he see it very short? He didn't see any of the germination. He didn't even see who he was. Come on, he just saw himself who he thought he was. We're nobody. We've come from a long line of nobodies. Nobody even knows we're here. I'm hiding away in here. But God knows where we're hiding. He knows what's on the inside. He's got things even now germinating that we've got no idea. Things are starting to come forward, new things, and we've got no idea what they are. Before there are even any indications of life or growth, God says, I will tell you of them. That's why God wants us to be a prophetic generation. That we're seeing things that, that aren't there. <laughs> Come on. That we understand, God, you're moving here. I can't see it in the natural, but I tell you what, I get so excited in the spiritual realm because I know I can see things. Because that's what faith is. Faith sees those things that aren't as though they already are. We can already see it happening. That's why I go into some churches, and I remember this one church is, I went up and shook the hands of this guy and said, oh, how you going? How's your family? He said, I'm not even married. Wow. And, and I'm thinking, this is a great introduction to the church. It's like, oh, this is going to be great for the weekend. You know, his prophet come up, and the first thing he does is like he gets it all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, to, I said to God, what do you mean? Because I could see him. I saw his wife. I saw he had this beautiful family. And I'm saying, God, what are you, what's going on here? Am I going crazy? And God said, no, I'm showing you up ahead. I'm showing you who he is. I'm showing you further, you know, two, three, four years up ahead. You can see. I'm showing you what is to come. See, that's why God says don't be limited to the natural sight. We limit things to the natural. We look at a person and think, nothing ever is going to great happen to them. They, you know, look at, look at them. Look at, whew, nah. And God says, look again. Look through my eyes. All of a sudden, we look through God's eyes and we see the potential. We see an amazing thing that God is about to do in their life. We can see them stepping out in faith. But in the natural, we can't see anything like that at all. That's why we've got to have God's eyes, prophetic vision, to see what God wants us to see. Before there's any indications of life or growth, I'll tell you of them. But you've got to be listening. You've got to be tuned in to hear. And I was, as I was woken up at 4.15 yesterday morning with this message for you, he said, listen carefully to what I'm about to show you. And I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. God is saying, I'm bringing new things. I heard the Lord say that this new place, the new church, the new place you're going is going to be something to behold. Something to behold. And that's why when I read the scriptures, that word behold, I am doing a new thing. Behold. It's, it just, just resonates, something that was there. So this word behold means to be aware of, to consider, to look, to perceive, to see, to be sure to understand, behold, I'm about to do something. Behold, I'm going to do a new thing. Understand. And so we understand the cloud and the, and the fire led them in the Old Testament times, but the Holy Spirit is leading you to a new land and to new things. New land, new things. God's leading you. We don't have to have the pillar of, uh, of fire by, by night and the cloud by day. We don't have to have the old structures, the old way of doing things. God says, listen, I'm doing a new thing. Holy Spirit is going to lead you. You need to be tuned in to me right now, being led by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's not like here's the big flashing lights and the, and the arrows, you know, just walk this way, <laughs> go this way. 
leave, leave your job. And, and, and so you just know, it's like, man, I just got all the bells and whistles and I just knew this was God. Well, we got nothing like, like that when we had to leave our job to go into ministry full time. Wow. We just got just a, just a little twinge in the Holy Spirit. It's like, hmm, this doesn't make sense. In the natural, this doesn't make any sense at all. We've never wanted a full-time ministry. We've loved God. We've loved the church, but we've loved our job. God, you've given us a great job. There's money that's there. There's things that we can have, you know, nice things. When, when we, we save some money up, we can buy them. But going into the ministry, boy, I tell you what, there's not much, <laughs> there's not much going on there. Amen. <laughs> but but we see, we, by, by the Holy Spirit, we just got this, Mm, I just know this is what we need to do. And, of course, we prayed and fasted about it. Any great decision like this, you need to get the mind of the Lord. You need to fast. You need to pray. You need to come in and say, God, what are you doing here? Because you're about to change my world. You're about to change my marriage. You're about to change my family because this is going to affect everything. Yeah. And so it wasn't just a whim. It wasn't just a, well, yeah, let's just try it out. No, no, no. You've got to burn the bridges. You can't go back. You can't look back. You've got to rip off that rear vision mirror. Come on. Some of us are living in the past. We're just looking at the rear vision mirror, and we're going to crash because we're, we're still looking in the past. And God is saying, listen, you can't go back. It's forward now. I love the, the, the two emblems on our coat of arms, the Australian coat of arms, is a kangaroo and an emu. Literally, both of those animals cannot take a backward step. Come on. Wow. They cannot. To go backwards, they have to go forwards to go back. They cannot back up. It's just not in them. It's not in their makeup. They can't do that in their own bodies. Yeah. Come on. Wow. Don't go back. Don't look back. Lot's wife, look back. Turned into a pillar of salt. So Holy Spirit is leading us into new things, new land. You've never been this way before. You have never been this way before. Some things haven't been revealed yet. We don't know about them yet. They're still being formed. They're so new. Come on. They are so new. Some things, uh, some things are waiting for other things so that they can become manifest from the spiritual to the natural. We're waiting for this, and God says, well, I've got to do this first before that happens. Some things are waiting for other things before they become from the spiritual into the natural. Before he does the new things, he will reveal them to you. You may not get the full understanding, but you'll know, God, you're up to something here. <laughs> Uh, I'm, on the right, I'm, on the, I'm on the right track here, oh God. I, I know, God, I, I'm not seeing too much here, but I'm not getting excited in the natural, but boy, in the spiritual realm, I know I'm about to come into something. I know, well, God, if I just keep on going, if I keep pushing, if I don't give up, come on, if I persevere, if I don't care about what everyone else is thinking, or whatever, come on, there's going to be all these little foxes trying to get you off tri target, trying to get you uh, all your time, your money, your effort, and all of a sudden it's like you've got no idea where you are because these little things are just trying to come in, nip at your feet. You know what happens when you live in the past? You forget where you live now. I'll tell you a story. Uh, before was, uh, we moved into ministry full time, I was working with a uh, uh, working with Nilex. We, we sold sprinklers and hoses and everything like that, and that was interesting. In the seven, uh, we're going through a ten year drought, I think, at that point. Uh, and so, but I would do. I had a big territory. I would cover a lot of of uh, the southeast Queensland, and so I would leave one one morning, come back another week later. And uh, but but this one time, we had shifted just before. I went on this trip, and so I'm finishing my trip, and I'm, and I'm coming back home, pull up in the driveway, and I was just about to get out, and I just realized something. Oh, I don't live here anymore. <laughs> I turned up at my old house. I come back to the old place, and God told me, he says, you better get off this land. I said, why? I used to, I, this used to be my place. He says, that was before. You are trespassing now. This is not where you live. This is not where you live. Come on. This is not where you live. But it's like, well, I lived there for years. Not anymore. You moved on. 
That's in the past. See, if, you don't, if you're not concentrating, if you're not focused on what God is doing now, you're going to end up in the past. You're going to end up pulling up in the driveway in the place where you used to be. I don't even know how I got there. I mean, it's like, because it's like I knew we'd shifted, but sometimes you, you're, not even, you're not even concentrating, you're not even focused, and because it's just a habit, I just come back to that place. Sometimes we're habitual in the thing that you've got to break off. Otherwise, you're going to end up back, and you're going to be trespassing. God says, you, they can have you arrested. It's like, I better get out of here. <laughs> so this is what the Lord said to me for LifeGate Church. I'm releasing new revelation. I'm releasing new revelation, new revelation of His glory, a new revelation of His love, a new revelation of His kingdom, a new revelation of His calling on your life, a new revelation of the times that we are in. We're in some amazing times right now. So many things moving on, so many things changing, so many things shifting. But listen, just because they change doesn't mean they're changing for the good. That's why God says, I want you in there and I want you to be the one who's shifting and changing things. Because the enemy wants to come in and he wants to say, I'm about to change some things. And if we've got no idea what God is doing, we can say, oh, okay, it must be all right. God is saying, no, 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 come on. Because the enemy loves to come in and try and change times and seasons. And he tries to change some things. And God says, it's not that time. But if you don't know what time it is, you just think, well, that's just what everyone else is thinking. That's what the, well, you just look around. It must be okay. Well, it must be all right. The, the, the global financial crisis, well, everyone's going through it. But listen, I've seen some Christian businesses that have increased, multiplied in the very time that everything should be pulling back. We shouldn't be starting anything. Well, they started the business and it's multiplied. Listen, we live in Goshen. Goshen. We're not in, we're not in Egypt. In Egypt, there's plagues. In Egypt, there was darkness. In Goshen, there was light. In Goshen, listen... In Egypt, everything died. All oh, their cattle died. Everything died. Not one person died. Not one, not one animal died. In Goshen. What is Goshen? Goshen is a place of drawing near. Drawing near to God. As we draw near to Him, what does He say? He says He will draw near to us. So in God, in Christ, in, in, in His kingdom, listen, you can be in, in Goshen, but you're also in the world. But you don't have to be causing what's going on in the world you, they should be looking at you how come you got a job how come you just got a promotion how come your your family's like that how come your marriage is like that how come because i live in goshen come on i'm not in the world i'm, not, I'm in the world but i'm not in egypt there's a difference and you got to understand that we are of god that God says you are different, not because we act different and we weird and carry on. No, because we are anointed for what God has got us to do. We're anointed. The anointing makes room. The anointing does these things and breaks off the yokes. So God says, I'm bringing new revelation. Because of this, we're needing to be new wineskins. New wineskins, not old patched up things. Come on, because this is... Like I said, not a lot of us, we, we don't want to change. We, we like the old, yeah, we like that, but, but we all oh, we want to go, oh, but we like the world, but, but I want to go to heaven. Oh, I like the discos, and, well, the, they're not discos oh, yeah. anymore. <laughs> but, but I want to go to heaven. Oh, but I like the clubs and the pubs. Oh, but, but I like the Sunday morning worship. This is not something old that you can put a few patches on and call yourself, whoa, I'm a new wineskin. God says no. He says, I cannot pour out new wine. I'm sorry. You're crying out all you want. Give me the new wine. Give me the new wine. God says, I'm sorry. I can't give you new wine because you're still the old. You still got the old there. You have to become a brand new wineskin. Brand new. Wow. And that's what God is saying to LifeGate Church. I'm bringing some new things. I want you to understand the new things. But listen, you've got to start changing some things. In the natural, change some things. Become new. 
I'm releasing new revelation. New revelation. I heard him say, I'm doing a new revealing. A new revealing. And it was interesting because on the way over on our, on our Qantas flight, I heard the stewardess say, it's time for the big reveal. And it was like I had just, just, uh, just woken up and just gone to the toilet and, and I just overheard this woman say this. And, and something just resonated. It's like, that's a bit weird. It's time for the big reveal. Now, now she was meaning it's time for brekkie, okay, breakfast. <laughs> Let's get everything ready for breakfast. So they, have, they turn the lights on. They, get, you know, they, they say, okay, this is what we're going to do. All that. And so it was the big reveal. But you know what? When I heard the Lord speak about this, I heard him say this for a LifeGate church. It's time for the big reveal. Because God is doing a, a new thing. It's time for the new church. The new church building is about to get a big reveal and God is going to do it. Amen. So you've got a part to play. You gotta, yeah, come on. You have to do the things. You've got to build it. You've got to get, you got to, Pastor Mickey, you gotta, he's got to get around those guys and say, come on, come on. Where's my windows? Where's my this? Where's my that? Come on, you got to go. Get ready. So, so, the, so we have a job to do, but God also. See, when we do our job, God then is able to do what he said he was going to do. Yeah. And I tell you what, when he said it to me, he says, I will bring the, the big reveal. Mm -hmm. God has positioned you where you are going to be. Yeah. That position is going to be important. You are going to be seen. Come on. But listen, God is going to be, bring a big reveal, which is, which is more important than us having a nice church and, and, and making it all nice and everything like that. Because when God does it, listen, that's why it's been so hard and tough getting into that place and, and even getting it started, let alone trying to get it finished. Because the enemy knows something is going to go on in that place so God is going to do a big reveal I also saw that God was doing a big reveal in certain individuals come on you're about to get a big reveal as well and it's again it's, it's not about well I want to be seen and, and I'm going to get up here and I'm going to preach everything like that the big reveal comes because you're doing th the, you're doing what God's asked you to do you're allowing the Holy Spirit to deal with those things in the, in the quiet time it, it, when no one else knows what's going on when no one else can see you in that, in that quiet place and God's doing a work in you then God can do the big reveal because he knows he's already dealt with the ego and he's already dealt with all the pride and he's already dealt with this and trying to get to those positions. Come on. You've already gone through the fires. He's already dealt the heart issues. Life game. You've gone through your wilderness. You've gone through your purging. You've gone through your fiery trials and your testing and you're about to get your big reveal. And the Lord started to speak to me just like Moses. After the time he had to go through the wilderness, God brings him forth. See, he thought he was ready to be the deliverer way before. But God says, you're not ready. Still got stuff I got to deal with. Takes him through the wilderness 40 years. Praise God, it hasn't been 40 years. <laughs> but he's took you through the wilderness. But he's been doing some purging. He's been doing some, some, some fixing up. He's been doing some heart issues. He's been doing some stuff. And then comes the big reveal. Now you are my deliverer. Come on. Now, God says, now what I had on you is going to be revealed. Come on. Now what I've had you to do. You thought this was okay. You thought this was pretty good because says, that's nothing compared to what I'm about to do and what you're about to see, this big reveal. And then God spoke to me about Joseph. God brings him out of his prison confinement to give godly counsel to Pharaoh who then in turn promotes him to the highest position under him. God's taken you and positioning you spiritually to a higher position. You're going from one place to another. That's what it says. You're going from glory to glory. From one level of glory to another level of glory. New levels. I think 
Joshua was, was, speak, was, was you know, praying or, or, or uh, uh, prophetically singing about new levels. God's taking us on too. And we see this with, with Joshua, no, sorry, with, with Joseph, that God brings him. But there's a promotion that comes, just like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, who had to go through that superheated fire seven times hotter than, than previous. But Jesus was there with him, with them in the midst of that fire. Come on. In the midst, doesn't matter what you're going through, Jesus is there with you. Amen. Seven times hotter. It's bigger. God, it's, it's worse. It's, it's, it's worse than ever before. And Jesus says, it's okay. We're walking through this. Yes. He's there in the midst. Yes. The king looks down and he says, hey, listen, didn't we throw three men in the fire? Who's that fourth one? Looks like the son of God. <laughs> Jesus was there. Yes. The king sees that they, they're not burned. They're not dead. They're still alive. The bondage has been broken off. And he says, bring them out. And then he promotes them. He promotes them. He gives them a better position than they had before. Yes. That's what I'm talking about today for you, LifeGate Church. God's going to give you a better position than you had before. It's a greater authority than he had yes. you have before. Also heard that he's releasing new books. Yes. Not just Dr. Sandy, new books, new teaching materials, new forms of media. There's, 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 there's new ideas. There's, there's things that, listen, there's some things that haven't even been invented yet that God's going to give you revelation. And, and it's like, how's this going to be done? Because things, <laughs> things aren't yet in place and in order. But, but, but you're ahead of these things. God's given you the ideas and the revelation. God's given you inventions. He's given it to you before they're even in the world. Oh, yes. Our son was talking to me uh, the other day, last week, and he said that he wants to go to Israel because there's, a, there's, there's some sort of a inventor's you know, thing on that, that Israel are way ahead in, in, in technology and certain things than the rest of the world. They've got these, these, these ideas that just, where do they come from? They come from God. So listen, God has got, God has got these things, and, he want, and he's saying, I've got them here, but I want you to come. I've got the secret things, but I want you to come, and I want to sh start to show them to you. So there's going to be some things that God's going to be releasing in new forms of media. He also said he's going to release new anointings. The, new, the anointing is what breaks the yoke. The anointing makes us grow so that every confining weight falls from us. In Psalm 92 verse 10 says, Because you have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox, I have been anointed. That word anointed also means to be smeared or to be poured on or to be rubbed over with fresh oil. I remember going to school when I was younger, and uh, and some of the um, um, what they, some of the, the fairs that, that the schools would have, just raising money and all sorts of things, they would have a greasy pig. There's a little piglet there that they would smear in in uh, in uh, lard and butter and grease and everything like that, and then they would they would have this great big area, and so all the kids. Uh, it, it, it was called the greasy pig catch. If you caught the pig, it was yours. So, so we would get in there and all these kids would be running after this pig. And as soon as we thought we got him, it's like, Phew! he just slipped out of our hands. And, we're, and there could have been you know, three or four of us. We got him, we got him. All of a sudden, every one of them just slipped out of our hands. And I looked at that and I thought, God, that's, that's who we are. We're like the greasy little pigs because we've been anointed. As soon as the devil says, ah, I got you, I was like, we slip through his hands because of the anointing. Come on. Because of the anointing. God has anointed us. He smeared us. He's poured over us. He's rubbed it in. Come on. And he said, I'm making you like a slippery little pig. Come on. The anointing. God's called us. He's anointed us. Isaiah 61. Verses 1 to 7. You know, Isaiah says, you've anointed us, you've appointed us, all this. I'm not going to go into reading all of that. But at the end it says that I've given you 
uh, double portion of prosperity because instead of shame, I'll give you uh, 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 honor. Come on. Everlasting joy. God says he's also releasing a new authority, new power, new authority uh, for LifeGate Church. God's releasing new levels. Uh, and again, you know, Joshua was, was right on when he was you know, speaking about that and prophesying through the, the song this morning. So, he, so we can make, uh, uh, take dominion and rule and reign in our spheres of influence that he's positioned us in. New authority, new power is coming to us. We must be bold and courageous and remove every stronghold and every obstacle from that sphere. God's called us to that place. And it's the anointing. It's not our giftedness, it's not our talent, or not our brain, it's not our education, it's not our uni degree, it's, it's not anything to do with that. It's the anointing. I mean, sometimes that comes in. But God has anointed you for that position. Let the anointing grab a hold and make room. It's the position. So God's given us the authority, and we need to demonstrate that over over our enemies. God's given you all, all authority over all of the enemy. Everything. Whatever the enemy can throw up, God's given us the authority. So we're to turn the kingdoms of this world into the kingdoms of, of our Lord and of His Christ. He's releasing new levels of breakthrough. New levels of breakthrough. Physically, for your health and healing, financially for you and your family and the generations to come. Spiritually, new levels of seeing, new levels of hearing, new levels of faith. You're going to new heights. You're going to new depths in the Lord. There's new things that God wants you to come into. Revelation. Listen, you, know, you, can, you can say all you want, but, but it, it's, it's, how we, it's how we model who we are. Are we, are we modeling Christ? Are we saying, Jesus is my healer and, and, and uh, we're still sick? Come on. Jesus is, whoa, Jesus, whoa, God has given me all things. He's, he's oh, come on. And you're still poor and you got this old run-down house and you got this car that keeps breaking down all the time. Listen, uh, listen this is a new level, church. God's bringing us into a new level. We're not just, well, this will just do. We take a vow of poverty, <laughs> oh, but we love Jesus. Well, listen, if you love Jesus, you love his word, and his word tells us a, little, a few things about, about prosperity, about coming into the things of God. Come on. It's not just prosperity financially, but it's walking in health and healing and, 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 and being a help to this world. There's a lot of things that we need to lift our game. New levels. He's taking us to new places spiritually and naturally. He's releasing new contracts. I heard contracts. And this is new house and, and new land contracts. Come on. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. Some of these new tech guys there are just in their teens and they're multimillionaires. That's, this is the time that we're living in, that we've got to get in there. And we've got to say, Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what are you downloading? What are you giving to me right now? I don't understand it, but God, give me the wisdom and revelation to put this in. Do I need to put it in now? Is there a time limit on it? What are you doing? Because listen, church, it's there. Why should the world have it? The world's got it because we didn't have it. We didn't grab it. We didn't quite get it. We didn't, we didn't have enough faith to do it. I know guys give me, he gave me a, an invention about measuring distances in rooms, you know, with this, with this laser beam. And I'm going, whoa, this is awesome. God, this is so cool. And so I just sat on it. And a couple of years later, I'm reading in the paper, here's this person invented this machine thing that, that measures distances with, I say, God, how dare he? That's my invention. You gave that to me. And I heard the Lord say, yeah, I did. And what did you do with it? Right. I didn't know I had to do anything with it. I just thought that was mine. Because I didn't do anything with it. God says, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to give it to someone else now. And now someone else has made all this money. Now someone else has got all the echo. Now someone else. Listen, you can't, just, you can't just sit on it and hold it. And just say, well, thank you, Jesus. I got it. And God says, you're not doing anything with it. Come on. 
You're going to have to give it to somebody else. New ideas. New, new car contracts. Recording contracts. I even felt for Josh, there's a, there's a recording contract that God is releasing. New ideas, there's new songs, there's new sounds that's going to be coming forward. New business contracts, work contracts, new job contracts. Come on, if you're looking for a new job, if you're looking for a better job, it's not that it's like, well, I'm just, I'm just here biding my time. No, no, no. No, no, God has put you there for a reason. You do the best you can. You do it as unto God, not as unto man. You mightn't like that boss. But I tell you what, you're not working for him. You're working for God. He's your boss. I remember this, one of this job, this job I had, and, and I got there, and, and it's like, wow, I'm ready to, to work. And it's like the boss says, this is what I want you to do. So I did it all. And, and I'm, I'm finished by lunchtime. He says, I says, so now what do you want me to do? He says, you finished everything? Yeah. Well, you bring a book in. You can read whatever you want to do as long as you got, you got your job done. So I thought, I'm going to bring the Bible in. Right. I knew he wasn't a Christian. But it's like, okay, but, but I'm just going to read. He said a book. Right. <laughs> this is a good book. Hey, it's a bestseller. So I brought my, put my Bible and I started reading my Bible. All of a sudden, another year goes by. I haven't got enough time to read my Bible and say, God, what is going on? Right. It's like, oh, I used to have all the time here. I used to sit down and have that quiet time. With, now I can't even, now it's all these customers coming in. Listen, God was blessing me. Yeah. If that job, if that, if that work closed down, I'd be out of a job. God says, I'm blessing you. Yeah. It's like, but my boss doesn't even love you. My boss hates you. My boss curses. My boss, he drinks and carries on. He doesn't even like me. He likes what I do. Okay, I'm doing the job. God says, I'm not blessing him. I'm blessing you. You got to understand that this ungodly person's business was starting to boom. It boomed so much. We had to put another couple of guys on because of the business, because all the people were starting to come. They were attracted to this business. Why? Because I was there. They're attracted to your business. Why? Because you're there. And God's going to bless that person. It doesn't matter whether they love God or not. But because you're there, this city is going to be blessed. Why? Not so much for the city, but because you're living in the city, God says, I want to bless you. New jobs. But you've got to be good at the other one. Come on. You've got to finish strong. Finish strong. He's releasing new strategies. New strategies for new battles. New strategies for new positions. New strategies for your marriage. New strategies for your children. New strategies for your business, new strategies for your community, and new strategies for your nation. Come on. God's already starting to work. He's doing a good work already. But listen, we got to keep pushing through. we got to keep going. That momentum is being built. So we're not stopping the momentum, but we're starting to catch a hold of what God's doing, and we're not getting in the way now. We're not dragging the anchors. We're starting to understand. Okay, God, you're doing a good work. I, I, I'm, I, come on, we're trying to keep up with him now. He's building that momentum. So life gate, God wants to reveal and to show his power through you. God raised up Pharaoh to show him God's power. In Exodus chapter 9 verse 16 says, Because I have raised you up for this very purpose, for this very purpose that I might show you my power. That power means strength and wealth and might. It also means chameleon. I thought that was a bit weird. <laughs> I get the power, the strength, the might, okay, Chameleon? And when, what does a chameleon do? It changes color. It changes, you know, in the environment. It changes. So listen, God is changing some things. He's wanting you to change. He's changed. I saw him changing atmospheres. Come on. Where the enemy try, try to bring in all this stuff. God is, God is saying, no, no, no. It's not, he's not going to have that. But he's changing atmospheres right now. Changing. So God has predestined times and situations and circumstances to show off His miraculous power so that His name will be glorified. 
And John chapter one, verse, uh, sorry, John chapter nine, verses one to three says, "As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth." Jesus was doing this, and then his disciples asked him, "Rabbi, who sinned, the man or his parents, the mom, the dad, because he was born blind? Someone has got to be have sinned here. Someone's got to be at fault here." And then Jesus just blew their theology out of the water. He said, "Nobody has sinned," and they're gone. What? But, 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 how, but how, how can the rest of our theology be right? <laughs> if this is wrong, someone must have sinned. And then Jesus said this, this fact. He said, this man was born blind so that God's glory could be revealed in his healing. In his healing. Listen, God has got predestined times. He's got situations right now for LifeGate Church that people are going to start to see, they're going to start to recognize, they're going to be reportable miracles, they're going to be recordable miracles. There's going to be people that say, I know, I know that person. How, how, how can that be? This, is, this has gone beyond all medical reasoning. This has gone beyond all doctors. We can't understand how this has happened. This has to be a miracle. Listen, and, and, and sometimes that word miracle is bandied around about, well, that was a miracle pass for a touchdown. Come on. It's got nothing to do with, with God. Sometimes it has. We've been praying for our football teams. <laughs> but, you know, a miracle is a miracle. A miracle is something that this is not, man cannot get involved with here. This is out of man's hands. This is God saying, I am performing this. No one else is going to take his glory. And he's saying, I'm bringing situations in. I'm bringing people in. I'm bringing things in right now. That LifeGate Church, come on, God is going to be moving through you. And, and, and no one may have been sinned, but listen, that person or that situation has come about so that God can get the glory yeah. in that healed situation. Come on, it's going to be healed, whatever that is. And listen, you guys have had your critics, you've had your accusers saying who has sinned, somebody must have sinned. Look at how long they've been taken to build that church. Look at how time, how many years that's been sitting there. You look at this and look at that. Someone, someone must be doing something bad. God is saying, nobody has sinned. Blew their theology out of the water. Well, something's going on. Something must be. God is saying, you watch. I'm bringing the big reveal. I'm bringing the big reveal. People are going to start to see. It's like, whoa. Man, I, I'm sorry for what I said. <laughs> Man, I, 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 thought, I thought something must have been going on because of all the stuff that... No, no, come on. God is going to have His glory be revealed. This has happened so the glory of God will be revealed in LifeGate. When Moses was at the Red Sea, he said to the Israelites, Stand still and see the Lord's mighty hand of deliverance. That's what I got when the Lord started to show me of what God is about to do in and through life gain, and that big reveal. It's going to be like that. You know, God, God literally, you know, when, when Moses was there, and they'd come to the Red Sea, and there was no way out. They just thought that, they, well, this is just a lovely place to, you know, stop and whatever. And then the enemy comes up, and he squashes them in between. They, there's nowhere that they can go. There is nowhere. There's no way. And so God says, listen, I'm going to make a way. They thought that they were going to die. They were crying out, ah, what's going to happen to us? And God says, this, this, isn't, this isn't your, <laughs> this isn't your uh, monument. <laughs> this is your memorial stone. Yeah. You'll be remembering this place, not because of all the death that happened here. You'll be remembering this place because of what God did. And he made a way where there was no way. <laughs> there was literally no way there. Come on. God didn't wait until it was low tide. God didn't wait until there was a drought that dried up all the water. They didn't have enough time. God did a miracle in their midst. God is doing a miracle in your midst right now, LifeGate, where there was no way. No way. There wasn't even a track. There wasn't even, come on, there wasn't even a, 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 a trail. There was nothing. God is saying, I'm making a way where there was no way. Absolutely no way. Even in some of your situations right now, God is going to make a way. Where, there is, where it is impossible, there is no way. 
Come on. Unless we had to walk on water. But God says, no, uh, you're not even going to get your feet wet. You're going to walk across. It's going to be dry. You don't have to go sloshing in through. Oh, God, it's going to be so hard. Even if you do part the water. Just, oh. No, God says, come on. Am I God? I can go above what you think or what you can even imagine. It's going to be dry land. You're going to get across there. And listen, don't worry about the enemy because the enemy you see today, you'll never see again. You, come on. Woo. <laughs> In your wilderness and desert situations, he will make a way. And listen, don't beat yourself up about missing some turns or missing some things. You missed a signpost because, you know, there were no signposts. <laughs> you didn't miss the turn because there wasn't a turn. This is a new way. Some of us were beating ourselves up. Oh, God, I should have seen that coming. Oh, God, I didn't know. It's like you didn't know because it wasn't even there. And this was the way I had you to go. That wasn't. That was your shortcut. That was you thinking, how can this be possible in the natural? God is saying, it's not going to be possible in the natural. This can only be done supernaturally. It can only be done by the hand of God. It can only be done by the power of God. You didn't miss the turn. There was no turn. You didn't miss the signpost. There was no sign. <laughs> this is new. God is doing a new thing. And I looked at that 4.15 and I thought, God, there must be some reference to some scripture, 4.15. I didn't do a lot of research. I didn't, I didn't have the time either. But, but this is what I come across. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. 4.15. All of this is for your benefit. <laughs> All of what? All the stuff. <laughs> All the stuff is for your benefit. That's why God says discipline is good for you. <laughs> Not at the time, but when you look back and say, thank you, God. I really needed that kick in the bottle. <laughs> All this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. When I heard this, I thought, God, this is what you're doing. The big reveal is coming. There's going to be a revival coming. And they're going to see the glory of God upon the church. And you said, it's not upon the building, although it's... I mean, it's not finished yet, but it looks pretty good. I've seen, I've seen what it's going to be looking like. It's a pretty good building. It's a beautiful place. But it's God is saying, you are the church. And they're going to be coming to you. They're going to be coming to your rising. And all of a sudden now, people are going to be born again. They're going to be saved. And they're going to say, there's something on you I want. There's a joy that I want. There's something on your family. What is it about you? You, you care about me. People don't care about me unless they want something. And you don't want something, but you care about me. What is it about you? That's what I'm saying. And God is going to get more and more of the glory. I'm going to finish with these two scriptures. I've got no, no time. i got no time whatsoever. I'm on, I'm on Australian time. So I got, we got, we got, we're still tomorrow. We're in tomorrow. <laughs> these two scriptures, just want to finish off with 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. Come on. You've gone through a lot of stuff. But listen, you're not crushed. At times we don't know where we're going or what to do. <laughs> but quitting is not an option. We're not given in. We're not given up. We are persecuted by others. But God has not forsaken you. We might have been knocked down, but we're not out. We're not knocked down. You might have been like Rocky. <laughs> knocked down, but you keep getting back up again. 
And people say, why do you keep getting that? You're going to get knocked down again. I don't care. There's something about, uh, listen, you, you, and you learn how to bob and duck and weave. You learn how to throw a few punches, like Pastor uh, uh, Mickey said. You know, he's sick of these, these um, hand grenades coming in, being lobbed by the air. We're going to start lobbing a few over. Come on, we're not just going to bob and stuff. We're not just going to take it. Come on, we're going to start to have, we're just starting to get, get offensive, not just defensive all the time. And we're going to have our offense and we're going to start to throw a few punches and we're going to realize that this is a, listen, this is not just a hundred yard dash. This is a marathon. We're in it for the long haul. We're going to know how to persevere. We're going to know how to push through. We're going to know how to last. We're going to outlast. Whatever the enemy throws at us, we're going to outlast it. We're not giving up. And Psalm 66 verse 12 says, You caused people to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and the flood. We just didn't go through one. We've gone through, we've gone through it all. But you, God, brought us out to a place of abundance. You brought us out. You brought us out. You brought us out to a place of abundance. You didn't bring us out to a hospital. You didn't bring us out to, to a place where, oh, God, now we've got to bandage up our bruises and now we've got to, oh, oh God, we're, we're so damaged. <laughs> no, he brought us out. Come on. He brought us out in a place of abundance. Why? Why? Because, because we're strong. Come on. You're not just going to come out as a little weakling. You've got to come out stronger than you walked in. You're going to come out and God's going to promote you. And as a church, you've overcome many obstacles. So many times the enemy has tried to block you, tried to hinder you, tried to frustrate you, tried to get you to give up, but you didn't. You overcame everything that was put in your path. You, LifeGate Church, are overcomers. You, LifeGate Church, are overcomers. You have overcome everything the enemy has tried to, to put in your way. Every obstacle you have overcome. You are overcomers. When you look at what God says to overcomers, come on, to you who overcome, I will give. Wow, come on, I will give. Whatever it is, God says, I will give because you've got to be an overcomer first. You've got to overcome. God has taken you to another level in your faith and your ability to overcome. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for this prophetic word for LifeGate Church. And Lord, that we can take so much for ourselves. And God, you're speaking individually to each and every one of us through these words right now. God, there's so much that you have to speak into our being. And Lord, today I receive what you have said to us and spoken into us and the promises that you have for us. Lord, I thank you that we are well able, that you have given us all we possibly need to overcome. And Lord, we give you all the glory today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we, can we stand right now? I, I want to... I just want to open up the, the altar right now because I feel like for some, for some of us, so we can just move that. For some of us where, even though we've heard this word, for some of us it's like, I know, I know I, I want to get there, but there's just, God, I want, to, I want to break free from the past. There's some things that are just sticking points right now. And it's like, God, I want to come into all you've got. I want to come into those new things. I want to come out of the old. I want to come out of that comfort zone. I want to, oh, God, you know how I am with comfort. I, I love the comfort. But listen, God is saying, it doesn't matter. You can change. Yes, and for some of us, I feel like, you know, we, you know, I'd love to pray for you right now. For those who just said, oh, God, I just know. I'm just in this sticking point right now, but I know what you've got for me. I want that. If that's you, I just want you to come down to the front right now. We'll pray. Just come down. I'm going to get Julie to come and she's going to minister with me. But you know, the anointing is here right now. The anointing has been here. There's something about the atmosphere 
we've created an atmosphere. The musicians this morning, they're not just uh, sounding good and they're not just talented, but there's an anointing upon the music. There's anointing because there, there's an atmosphere that needs to be produced right now. There's an atmosphere here right now for miracles. There's an atmosphere that we're building. God is changing some things in our life right now. He wants us to be the new wineskins, to hold what He's got for us. Listen, I tell you what God is releasing here today. You've got to be a new wineskin. You can have little bits and pieces, but God wants you to have everything. He wants you to have the whole word, the whole lot. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. The ones down the front here, just, just get into that place now, just you and God. Thank you, Father. Just, just draw upon Him right now. Thank you, Jesus. 